You're listening to America's Off-Road Podcast. Brought to you by Off-Road Power Products. Fueled by enthusiasm, a passion for the outdoors, and a spirit of adventure, we drive the industry we love. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of America's Off-Road Podcast. Before we dive into this awesome episode, I'm going to introduce my guest and author, Mr. Brian Meyer from Get Lost. How are you doing, sir? Good. It's good to be here, Kyle. I'm Thanks glad. For yeah, absolutely. And before we go into uh, Brian's story and what he does, um, as a reminder, you guys can listen to us, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, and you can watch us live on YouTube. And I'll tell you what, it is a hot one today, folks. We are fully committed to this episode. Um and it's hot. It's like 110 degrees outside right now. We're in a room with no AC, so it's going to get interesting. Yeah, we, fire. Somebody it's, made it's pure fire. I don't know. It's hot, though. Anyways, um, so, yeah, you can tune in there. Uh, if you guys have questions on a future podcast episode or you want to um, leave a review, take a screenshot, send it to podcast at offroadpowerproducts.com, and give me your address, shirt size, and maybe I'll get something in the mail for you. Um, again, like we have mentioned in the past, this is all organic. We're enthusiasts. We love doing it. We love talking about it. And so all your downloads and views and reviews um, are very genuinely appreciated. So Brian Meyer, Get Lost, sister company of Power Products Unlimited, kind of. Um, but first off, let's dive into where this whole adventure of yours started, and that is Awaken the Bear. Awaken the bear. Awaken yeah. the bear. So, give us a little a little history here on <clears throat> where you came from. First of all, before sure. this get lost adventure yeah, yeah. kind of came about. Uh, well, before all this started, um, in fact, for twenty one years before <laughs> this started, uh, I was working as a high school English teacher. So, what I'm doing now is a uh, 180 degrees from what I was doing then, but in some change, yeah, big change, but in some ways the teachers uh, still in me and we can, we can get to that in a moment. I can't, I can't shake them, (laughs) Um, but that was my past. That's where I come from. And uh, there's no doubt that still informs pretty much everything I do. Right. And what were you teaching? Uh, I was teaching high school English, high school English, ninth grade, 10th grade, for 11th grade, 12th grade. For kind of a, a school that a lot of you guys probably have heard of, Gonzaga, not that not the college, but Gonzaga Prep. Yeah, yeah, the high school it used <clears throat> to be the same school. Gotcha. Years ago, and then they broke into two. So I was the I was the high school version of Gonzaga. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So English teacher, twenty one years, and how in the world did you end up in this building <laughs> with all of us yahoos? <laughs> Well, I mean, what a roundabout story. But the the idea came about uh, in Moab, uh, in a Jeep, uh, of all places. Yeah, so there's the there's the connection. Um, I was sitting in a Jeep in the back seat, as a matter of fact, bouncing around. Um, My good friend and brother-in-law Brian Howell was in the front seat. Brian Howell is behind a, a lot of what we do here, as everyone knows. And, and Brian started to, as he often does, um, <laughs> throw some ideas into oh, the air. Oh, no. I couldn't believe it. Uh, and one of those <laughs> ideas was uh, exploring, um, oh, at the time we called it a, a writing career. Right. Um, but it wasn't necessarily with books in mind. We were talking about creating a website, um, blogging, and blogging about some of the things he and I, you know, had in common we loved sure. taking our boys outside uh we loved ex- exploring moab and jeeps and on bikes uh we loved camping together getting outside and so you know it was it was definitely in its early forms when we were talking about it but that's that's kind of what kicked this thing off and so in the early years of what is now get lost um it was really just a small blog yeah and the blog uh quickly turned into a book and the, uh, and the book uh, took on the name Awaken the Bear which is a perfect name for the book is it good yeah thank you it, <laughs> yeah yeah I it like is. it it's, I, I like it it's a really cool book and there's there's a ton of similarities between us, us and Get Lost and before we dive into the website and all those good fun goodies um, talk a little bit about this book what it means to you 
Um, if you haven't read it, you guys can get it at getlost.com. We'll dive more into that. But this book is <clears throat> it's a great book about not just adventure. It's more of like the not necessarily the spiritual side of it, but just like it makes you like really think about like what does it mean for you? What is it? it yeah. It's a killer book. <clears throat> uh, so, well, thank you for that, Kyle. Yeah, w- w- what I think happened was as I was blogging, I realized very quickly I didn't know how to blog. <laughs> <clears throat> it wasn't. <laughs> wasn't your cup of tea, huh? Well, it, it just wasn't. It wasn't my world. I came from the world of teaching Shakespeare and Dante, Hemingway, and then I dove into blogs, and I realized very quickly I hadn't really read blogs. Right. Uh, and I had this, this distorted idea of, of what blogging might be. And uh, I quickly realized that in the blogging world, um, there's a high value placed on on um, cranking things out. Right. Um, lots of content, 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 hitting keywords, and, th- and that's and that's fine and good, but I, I, that's not what I I imagined myself doing. Sure. So I found myself um, instead of writing blogs, I was writing what felt like chapters in a in a book. So I, I, I yeah, quick, sure. very quickly, inadvertently wrote a good bit of the book that is now Awake in the Bear. Through your blog. Trying to learn how to blog. <laughs> uh, and doing it and doing it pretty poorly because it was going slowly. Um, and <clears throat> back to your point, I was, I was taking a deep dive. Right. Uh, I was really interested in the topic. It's something I care deeply about. Um, going back to the title, the idea of the book is uh, tapping into the the innate wild within us, right? And 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 I'll tell you right now, when I talk about these things, there's a real risk of sounding a little bit cheesy. So I apologize <laughs> for it, but it, it's something I care about very deeply, and I know some of it it, it can border on cliche a, a little bit. You know, waking up the wild inside you. Right. I, I know that, but if you care about it like I do and you do. And you have uh, kids, for instance, where you see how powerful um, that can be. Um, it goes way beyond cliche. And the deep dive becomes really interesting because you see value in it. Oh, I, I totally agree. And it's I, in, from my perspective, having kids, I don't think it could be m- more relevant in the world that we're currently living in. Yeah. With the way technology and social media and everything's taking over, it's <clears throat> it's a, it's tough. In fact, right before this podcast, you and I were just briefly chatting. Like it's so easy on a Friday night when you get off your work week to go home and sit and look at your spouse or significant other and say, "Let's just sit and watch a movie." Right. When you're gonna, if you if you just take small steps to these adventures, and even if it's just a quick weekend trip, or if you decide to book out some time and do a bigger trip. It's just we've it's it's almost like <clears throat> a lot of us have just become in and it doesn't matter if it's an adventure trip camping. It doesn't matter if you're going out wheeling with your friends. Um, I think it's it's relevant to whatever your hobbies are, really. Um, it's just so easy yeah, these days yeah. to just go home yeah. and sit and be like, hey, let's just turn the TV on and kick back. Yeah. And like uh, like anything uh, when when writing's involved you learn as you write right right you learn as you write so as i was as i was thinking through this idea how do you awaken the bear or for some people it might be reawaken the bear sure you know that wild within um when i was thinking about that it it really became obvious that this wasn't a book about um far-flung adventure at all and that and that became uh, for me a huge part of what drove the stories within it this was a book about uh, micro adventure totally um, and and adventure for people who don't consider themselves all that adventurous sure. so uh, as much as uh, you know the book began as as an idea formed deep deep on the trails of Moab <laughs> it was only it was that yeah but it, it was it wasn't for just the people right who are lucky enough to go deep into the trails of Moab. You know, this book is for people who, you know, take a hike uh, in the park. Totally. By their house. Yeah. Uh, It's equally for those people. And, and, and I see, I see the power, um, the importance of those activities as being equal. 
Totally. Yeah. One of my kids' favorite things to do now, and it, it used to be a Sunday, Sunday tradition. I need to reread the book so I can reawaken my bear. But one of their favorite things to do when I, when I built that Colorado of mine was on the weekends, every Sunday, we would go spend two hours at Seven Mile ORV Park. It's not crazy wheeling. It's yeah. not far yeah. away. Yeah. But we would just go. They would hop out, run around. We'd do some wild things in the truck. And it was the highlight of their weekend every time. And it was almost like it was like recharging right. your batteries. And it's so close to home. It doesn't take yeah. t- hardly any time, hardly any money. But it was just something that was we got out of the house. We did something fun. And, uh, yeah, they loved it. <clears throat> so this book, how long did it take you to write? How many phases did you go through? I know it was a process <laughs> for you. Probably a daunting task, but it um, kind of just started the, this whole thing. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. So <clears throat> if any of you out there are interested in writing a book, um, be warned. <laughs> um, it is a task. Yeah. And and ultimately, the book that uh, you'll find if you go to getlost.com and you look up Awaken the Bear is is only a portion of the book that I wrote. When I published it, I I, I shaved it down to its essence because right. I, I got to the point where I realized I just really needed to release this thing into the, into <laughs> the it, world, into the, into the wild. wild. Right. I needed, <laughs> a, a, and so I started to imagine it being part one of a series. A type of series. Um, so that now your hands deep in a website. That's yeah. So be. <laughs> I, I have part two and part three. I tell people. About 80% <laughs> written, but I can't be, can't get back to it because Awaken the Bear um, <clears throat> inspired me to launch GetLost.com, right? Um, which is an outgrowth of the book, uh, which is my attempt to um, help people find the right gear. Yeah, totally. To and get it's, themselves <clears throat> outside. The reason we've waited so long to get him on the podcast, and so obviously he's brother-in-law of the owner here. He started this Get Lost company. Um, he wrote the book. But this has been a work in progress for several years. Yeah, several years. Um, Don't remind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's paying off for you, yeah. buddy. Um, but, I mean, we had you had the book out at um, Overland, uh, no. Overland es- Expo. Overland yeah, Expo. Yeah. So he was at Overland Expo. Down so some Arizona. of you listening may have even bought his book um, at his booth at Overland Expo. But, yeah, transitioning into from the book, which, again, it's a quick read. It's an awesome read. So if you guys want to get some inspiration behind just like Brian said, either awakening your bear, reawakening your bear, if you will. Um, it's such a quick, awesome read, and it really does make you think about like the little things. Yeah, um, yeah, which is I, great, and it's it's trans- transitioned into getlost.com, which is a killer, killer website. And talk about having the right gear um, to be comfortable on your adventure, even if it is a walk in the park. You got some really cool stuff on there. Your rumple blankets, yeah, whew, yeah, those are killer. That'd be a great blanket to take to the park. But tell us a little bit about this website, how um, it's developed, what you kind of took away from the book, and, and um, it, it's a pretty unique website. It's I don't want to use the word boutique, but it's you've you've hand selected every single product that you have on this site, right? Um, so yeah, boutique is curated, sure. Uh, I just put a lot of thought in, into into what what I allow to be on the site because sure. what I'm really going for is a, is something that represents the ideas that I was writing about in the book. So, for example, um, I've been very excited about one of my categories, one of my favorite categories, which is the bushcraft. Oh yeah, category. Uh, this is something um, I, I wouldn't say I'm a serious bushcrafter, um, but I admire what bushcraft is about. And, and it's something both my boys are really interested <laughs> in. And uh, for those of you out there who, who aren't familiar f- with what the word bushcraft means, to me it means getting back to the elemental. So it's not just going camping. It's going into the outdoors and then challenging yourself to to really tap into the elements, fire, steel, right. earth, and, and rely on yourself so it's a exactly it's a decision to be self-reliant so uh, a big part of my website an outgrowth of the book is that if if you're going to awaken the bear one of the things you need to do is you need to simplify get back to basics strip things down and I, I found the the art of bushcraft as being a really perfect 
conduit for that idea. So totally. Uh, personally, that's my favorite favorite corner of the website. Yeah. Um, and it represents one big aspect of of what the book is about. Okay. Yeah. S- um. So how many different categories are on your site? You, you said you've got a couple different. Yeah, it's it's growing. So one of the second um, areas that interests me is, I don't want to say overlanding. <laughs> I don't want to say okay. car that's, camping. That's okay. But I have to because it's 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 the two of those together. It's a it big, really is. It's yeah. a big part of my life, and it was a big part of the book. Um, the book began... Uh, essentially with a drive to Alaska, or, or the story in the book, I should say, began with me uh, many, many years ago um, driving across Alaska. Um, and it's the drive that, that, that took me to places that I would have never seen. And so, and it's, it's something that I do with my wife and my boys all the time as well. I'd li- I like to get in a vehicle and right. see where the four wheels take me. Yeah. And I'm not, uh, I'm not admittedly not, and you know this, I'm, I wouldn't call myself an off-roader. I'm not, <laughs> um, though I, I love to join in when you guys go out. Totally. Um, but I like to have a vehicle that can get me on the gravel roads. Well, and that's a great transition because I, wo- I do want to touch on, for those of you that he's not just an author and, and has this website, you are j- the idea of the enthusiast um, when it comes to overlanding. Um, I mean, you got a, a Ram 1500 that's fully built out, warm bumpers, lifted, method wheels, 35-inch Nitto Trail Grappler tires, yeah, yeah. Nemesis rack, 230 tent, and you use the crap out of it. And the cool thing that I love about, and I'll never forget this, how meticulous you are, whether it's putting something on your website or what goes in the book, what doesn't go in the book. Um, I remember how many conversations we had about like what your next vehicle was going to be. You yeah, were, and, yeah. and even when you got that truck, you're like, well, maybe I should get something like, a, you know, this land cruiser or something I like know. that too. So it's, you really are a true, true enthusiast. So he's just not here sitting, spitting out stuff to go to get And that's yeah. why we definitely wanted to get you on here is because you are um, a great representation of an enthusiast in the industry. So you, you're using all these products. Yeah. So, so <clears throat> on that note, the other area that really interests me goes, goes way back to my childhood. And so it's driving out to the woods, but when you get to the woods, my recollection still, still, um, hinges on the smell of a canvas tent, right? You know, an old green Those Coleman, old. Yeah. Coleman cooler, <laughs> yep. uh, that green Coleman stove, old uh, school lanterns. Yeah, and, uh, and, and I'm still in love with, with that aspect of camping. So as much as I right. love all the high tech gear and high tech equipment, um, I wanted to dedicate a portion of my website to heritage quality gear. Not only things that reminded me of being a kid camping in Colorado with my parents, but um, it evoked the spirit of of kind of that that time we've lost, right? Or maybe not lost. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Forgotten. A time that um, w- we also like the bear within us. A time we need to reconnect with, you right? Know, when camping wasn't so complicated no just a big fat leather t- uh, yeah. canvas tent <laughs> yeah that you threw up and a, a cooler, cooler that barely was, kept your beer cold <laughs> exactly. and you had just as much fun and you're sitting there for 20 minutes trying to light a fire because you didn't bring the right you, stuff to right light it. right right you're not right. dumping gasoline on it and just right yeah uh, it's it's crazy how technology has not only made camping more convenient which to a certain aspect is awesome but there really is a disconnect and i see it in my kids when we go camping and i'm totally guilty of this we go camping i grab every high-tech gadget that we have in our gear yeah, closet they're fun yeah, yeah. And they're awesome yeah. i grab the power bank i'm like we can charge phones yep. we yep. can do this we can do that but then i look at the experiences i had which wasn't that long ago with my folks and it was like oh who's got the lantern pouches or i don't even know what the yeah, correct yeah, term yeah, for yeah. it is filaments what yeah the, uh, yeah and it's yeah, those just like great. those uh, my kids it's like okay i gotta do something because th- that's what camping is mm-hmm. um and it doesn't matter how you do it. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as you're getting into the outdoors, it's great. But that, I mean, that is a great point. And that's awesome that you found these cool manufacturers that kind of connect that portion with camping. Right, right. So it's just something that interests me. Um, I love the I love the look of the older gear. Mm-hmm. I love the the touch of it. Um, even 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 the, that strange old smell of canvas oh, yeah. that's been. You know, like an old army tent. There's something about that that has a charm that I'm drawn to. So, 
I'm working hard to make that part of Get Lost too. That's awesome. Yeah, it's not an. It's really not an easy thing to do. Um, it, it it pushes the website to really reach out to some companies that are a little more obscure at times. Right. Um, sometimes they're more high end. Sure. Um, it's hard to strike a balance where because I want my gear to be accessible too. It doesn't right. have to be over the top expensive. So there's a little of both. Sure. But um, the, if if you were to ask me what I'm most proud of of when I talk about get lost, it's those two two categories, those two components, because those are as, as close as you can come to to what Awaken the Bear was about. Awesome. Yeah. So aside from those two categories, um, what would be a kind of a, a brief summary of it, those people listening? If they to go if they go to getlost.com, what can they expect? What products are they going to see um, aside from those other categories? Yeah, good question. Um, Self reliance uh, has been a big part of the the website, not only in bushcraft, but it, it also leans towards um, emergency preparedness, right? Um, survival, um, which is again, sorry to interrupt you. Like, talk about being relevant. No kidding. I mean, we're sitting here literally. If you're watching on YouTube, we're just dripping. It's hot as heck in here. But we we were just talking. Our power grids are being shut down right now for like yeah. hours at a time because it's so hot. We saw what happened in Texas where people were out of power for weeks. The pandemic hit, yeah. and <clears throat> although all that stuff is crazy, it's great to see companies like yours that are encouraging self reliance in these emergency preparedness situations because. Yeah. A lot of times, a lot of times you don't need it when you're out in the woods. It could be when you're at home, and you never know when you're going to bust out that emergency pack. Yeah, a lot of what we use for camping really doubles in a. It's perfect. Totally. It's perfect for emergency kit, and that's where the idea came from. Um, as I was building the site, it, it was a natural outgrowth, and a lot of the companies that I was seeking out had great, great gear. Yeah, um, that really catered to not only the camper but also also to someone who just wanted to have good equipment around. Right. Uh, it, when things went went south. Yep. So you know we've got some some Kelly kettles, uh, really cool cooking equipment that you can use. You know you can burn anything, so right. you don't need fuel. So if electricity goes down, you fire up your Kelly kettle. You can boil water. There you go. Work great. And it just so happens that the company that makes the Kelly kettle also makes some really great water containers that can double for food storage. And I started putting those aside on my site. And I'm like, this is, this is actually a great thing because it's going to satisfy a lot of my customers, but it's yeah. also again, r right in the wheelhouse of awaken the bear to being prepared. Yep. Um, going back to basics, taking care of yourself. Yeah. Um, those things matter to me. I think we're really, uh, it, and I don't know if we're at a pivot point because we've been in this place for a while, but it's so easy to lose touch of basic skills in this world because our phones do everything for us 100 percent. and the other cool thing with these products that i personally like being i've got a six-year-old at home an eight-year-old at home like you cook on the timbo tusk they think it's the coolest thing yeah. ever you bust out a kelly kettle and they're like this is awesome Isn't it and true? what turned into like let's make dinner is like this new adventure for them and they're like this mm -hmm. is cool instead mm -hmm. of like opening the microwave or throwing something in the oven. It's just like right. something fun you can do. And it's awesome. Um, well, Mr. Meyer, we're in here just getting baked alive. There's a little bit of sweat running <laughs> down our brows there right now. Is. That's true. Um, but I, I'm so glad to have you on here. It won't be the last time. Um, but make sure you guys check out get lost.com, right? Get lost.com. Get lost.com. Really cool. We are in the same building here. Um, and uh, that we're going to be doing, I think, in the near future, too, a lot of kind of cross-promotion stuff together. I'm sure we'll, we're getting ready to go to um, Outdoor Retailer this August, which will be cool. Kind Looking of our goal there to is to uh, reach out to some new manufacturers to bring you guys some awesome products that are coming up um, for the 2021 and early 2022 season. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Oh, it's been an honor. Kyle, love what you guys do. Hey, we love, love what you do. I'm glad you made it, it on to the, uh, to the episode. And definitely, yeah, guys, you. if you don't check out GetLost.com, at least check out Awaken the Bear. You can get that in a lot of places, too, can't you? Definitely you get it on the website. You can buy get it. it from Get Lost, but you've got it in, like, the whole, like, Amazon You can Amazon get it, of course. Or something Am too, or? Amazon has it, too. It's yeah. in their bookstore, sure. Very cool. Yeah. If you guys are looking to uh, spice up your adventure life and – reignite it make sure you check it out awaken the bear by brian meyer there's another awaken the bear an adventure driven life is that the whole title or 
Yeah, it, it's it's been slimmed down. Slimmed the down. title's been slimmed down. Um, okay. That has a little bit to do with what Amazon <laughs> wanted me to put on my book or allowed me to put on my book. Um, um, but Awaken the Bear will take you right to it. Perfect. Yeah. It's a great book, and definitely check out GetLost.com again. It's a great website. You did a phenomenal job building it. It's all done by this guy right here. So um, make sure if you do guys enjoy the website or enjoy the book, leave him a review. I'll tell you what, if you screenshot a picture – of a review on Awaken the Bear. If you've read it or your order from Get Lost, we'll make sure we send something in the mail to you. Just go to podcast at offroadpowerproducts.com. Send me a screenshot of your Get Lost order number or a screenshot of the re review that you genuinely read from Awaken the Bear, mm -hmm. and we'll make sure we get you something in the mail to hook you guys up. Mr. Meyer, we'll see you next time on another episode. I'm glad you made it. Sorry, All right, man. Sorry thanks it's so thanks a lot. <laughs> you betcha. We'll see you guys next time on offroadpowerproducts.com. See you later.